things the Warriors defense is working on during the few day extra days it has before starting whack play is getting the offense back on the field. In Hawaii's loss to UNLV, the Warriors offense was at work a mere four plays the entire third quarter with arguably the best receiving core in the country and one of the most productive quarterbacks in Greg Alexander. You can bet the rest of Hawaii's opponents will try to do the same. So the Warriors defense will need to work even harder. As a defense, that's our goal, you know, always to get our offense on the field. And uh, our challenge this week is to, like, get three and out. And uh, we try to play less than 50 plays a game, you know. We just got to know our assignments better and uh, play, uh, communicate better. And I think uh, we'll get the job done. We got to D up, and we want to go three and out every time so our offense can get, because our offense is solid. It's, they're, I think, the best offense in the country. So we just want to go three and out. I mean, we got to just D up and dig our feet in the ground, and ho hopefully we could do it. It's time to get out, and uh, we just got to, one of us just got to step up and make a play. And um, that's something we didn't do against uh, UNLV, and uh, that's the that's challenge for us this week, you know, uh, to just make plays on third down and uh, just rise to the occasion. Warriors and Bulldogs go at it next Wednesday. Kickoff is at 2 p.m. Hawaii time, and that's live on ESPN2. In WAC. How's it going, everybody? 2 and 1 Warrior football team continued practice today for Wednesday's conference opener against Louisiana Tech in Ruston. Now, following a 12 day, two game road trip to Seattle and Las Vegas, UH is set to hit WAC play as what they call a much closer team. You know, two weeks on the road is a long time, and, uh, you know, especially. You know, we had that one, you know, a pretty good game against Washington State where, you know, we kind of built a big lead early. And then uh, even though we lost that UNLV game, I felt like, you know, we stuck together. We played well as a team. Uh, you know, offense had defense back. Defense had our, uh, the offense back. And so I felt like, you know, even though we lost that game, you know, I think it brought us together a little more. You know, after a tough loss like that, we all kind of come together and we're there for one another, you know. Everybody's telling each other a good game and stuff, you know. So we, we have a lot to learn from the loss, and uh, it, it brought us closer together. The team bonders, we're all so close. So we all know each other on a little bit more personal level. We know how each other playing a role. We know how we play at home. So we just, we just expose everything and just unleash the Warriors. You know, and it's ready to go. U8 six and one all time against Louisiana Tech. Kickoff set for Wednesday at 2:05 Hawaii time. Well, the Warriors were back at practice early this morning as they prepare for their road matchup against La Tech on Wednesday. The last time the Warriors were in Ruston in 2007, the team won a thrilling one-point victory in overtime. The team is hoping this time around the game won't be as close. The good news is that Hawaii is six and one in head-to-head -head matchups against La Tech. Now, one of the keys to the team's success has been the emergence of wide receiver Rodney Bradley, who is fifth in the nation with 127 yards receiving per game. Rodney Bradley is a, a great player, and uh, we knew he was going to be. He wasn't throwing a lot of balls in junior college, but uh, we liked how he caught the balls that he did catch, and he, he's just been playing outstanding. I think he's dropped one ball uh, the entire first three games, so he's... He's a special guy, plus he can run. Now the game can be seen live on ESPN2 at 2 o'clock Hawaii time. As far as the UH football team is concerned, the most important part of their season begins now. Despite a loss last week, Hawaii's goal of a WAC championship is still intact, and it kicks off next week Wednesday at Louisiana Tech. You can look at it as if those first three were kind of preseason and now we're getting ready to, you know, get up and win league. And so, uh, you know, we just got to get our mindsets right and say, you know, we're you know, almost starting a new season. You know, we just got to go out there and play like we can. This is our first uh, whack opener and we just got to be ready because, you know what I mean, that's what we preach every every break is uh, whack champs, whack champs. And it's time to uh, show up and become that. Hawaii's last trip to Ruston ended in dramatic fashion. Warriors needed a 49-yard field goal by Dan Kelly to force overtime, and then a batted ball by Gerard Lewis there sealed a 45-44 win. As for the head-to-head -head series, Hawaii is in control with a 6-1 mark with two of those wins coming on the road. It is also the 24th time UH will open WAC play away from the Aloha Stadium. They have a 9-14 record in those games. Kickoff next Wednesday is at 2 in the afternoon. Hawaii time. When word got out that ESPN was adding another studio out west, former Kailua resident Neil Everett was one of the first to sign up to make the move from Connecticut to California. 
goals when you were alive. Now that Neil Everett's relocated to ESPN Los Angeles, it's easier to catch a UH football game in Las Vegas. And since Mid-Pacific grad Nate Jones works with him now, they were both on the UH sidelines. Jones says being around Everett is always a reminder of home. He, you know, it refers to things in Hawaiian time and, you know, throws out the power of poi for when Victorino homers or Kurt Suzuki. Do the rest of your ESPN co-workers kind of like it? Yeah, they love it. They love it. Yeah, they're always, uh, you know, saying how's it. That local flavor is now Everett's signature in the sports world. Hawaii was also his motivation in moving out west. And with the TV ratings up, it's been a win-win situation. And professionally, it's just been a home run for me. The people that I've got to interview in the in the four or five months that we've been there, it's just a who's who. Who is your favorite interview so far? Well, I got to interview John Wooden. He's 98. I got to ask him about um, how he had prepared himself to die. I felt that was really a, a question that maybe a lot of people wouldn't ask. Just really intense to be next to a guy that has the resume that he does and has lived the life. Everett says besides the sports icons, Hollywood has a star power unlike anything he experienced in Bristol. <laughs> uh, Justin Timberlake, actor, singer, dancer. That challenges you as an interviewer because you don't want me to ask Brad Pitt about Angelina Jolie. You want me to ask Brad Pitt something that's relevant sports-wise. And so that's fun to try and find those angles with people and find out what makes them tick as a sports fan. And of course, Everett said, uh, or Neil said, that he's now living on the beach in L.A., so that's nice for him. Makes him feel like he's that much closer to Hawaii. Yeah, I never had the opportunity to work with